Hello, this is Pastor Dwight Washington Sr. And on behalf of myself, my wife, and the entire Beach Grove Bible Church family, I want to thank you for visiting with us today. Hey, we are a growing family church that believes in teaching the Word of God in a powerful yet practical way. It is my hope that you were blessed during your visit with us today, and I want to personally invite you to visit with us again real soon. You know, quite honestly, I believe that we're literally the best church on the southeast side of our great city. Yeah, of course, I'm biased, but it's true. Hopefully, you got a chance to say hello to either myself or my wife or one of our staff persons, as we always try to say hello to everyone, but especially our guests. Hey, I don't want to take up any more of your precious time, so I'll end by saying that if you presently don't have a church home, I would ask you to consider Beach Grove Bible Church. We would be an awesome church for you to be a part of. You can check us out on the World Wide Web at beachgrovebiblechurch.org. That's beachgrovebiblechurch.org. There you will find out more information about our ministry, about myself, about my wife, about our staff persons, and about some of the things that we're trying to do to impact our community. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Today is such a great day to honor our Father and thank Him for dying on the cross for our sins and rising again. We're thankful today, God. You're too big.
Supporting ministry at Beach Grove Bible Church is easy using our website, www.beachgrovebiblechurch.org. Looking at the menu at the top of the screen, click on Give. Here you will see predefined giving options and other to place your custom amount. Enter in the amount you want to give and click OK. Next, you are presented with options on how to categorize your gift. After choosing an option, you can add a message, add another donation, or make a recurring payment. Clicking Add Donation will give you the option to choose another amount and label if different from your first choice. Here you will see the total amount you will give and how each gift is labeled. When finished, click Give Now. If this is your first time giving through GiveLafly, you will need to create an account. You can complete this by using your Facebook account or filling out the information below using your email account. If you already have an account with GiveLafly, you can click Sign In to log into your account. Type in your email address and password, then click Sign In. You will see you have successfully logged in. Click Continue. Click the I'm not a robot box and give now to complete your giving. You can also give by using the GiveLafly app found in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store from your mobile device. For people wanting to mail in their giving, you can send your checks to Beach Grove Bible Church, P.O. Box 545, Beach Grove, Indiana, 46107. Thank you for your support and helping ministry move forward. Hello to all of you, my Beach Grove Bible Church family and those who are watching us online. I am so excited about this new year, 2023. It is going to be absolutely awesome. I want you to know that I've been missing you guys so much. I, I cannot wait until next Sunday, January the 8th, to see you again. I believe that it's going to be spiritual pandemonium in the house. I believe that God is going to move in a miraculous uh, way. And I'm, I'm just anxiously anticipating everything that God is going to do in, with, and through us on this year of 2023. I want you to consider that of all the things that happened to you, all the people that did not make it to see this year, God has spared your life and you are here, you're watching me, I'm talking to you, and God has blessed us both uh, to be yet in the land of the living. And I, for that, I give him praise. I give God glory uh, for just sustaining life. I am so happy about all that God is doing in our ministry and in our midst. I'm happy about everything that God is doing in your personal lives and in your personal ministries, those things that God has called you to do. And he is just sustaining you and keeping you and meeting every need. That's my prayer that my wife and I pray for all of you, that there will be no lack in your house, uh, that there will be no lack in our midst, that every need uh, will be supplied. God has just blessed us. And even during this COVID season, God uh, blessed uh, the Beach Grove Bible Church to, to make a major purchase. We purchased our building when a lot of other ministries and churches were shutting down god was saying to us expand uh you know enlarge your territory and and we're just so excited about uh just just all the things that god has done and that he continues to do i tell you what people of god god never ceases to amaze me he's always up to something good and so i'm just so thankful that I'm allowed to be here today. And I just want to talk to you for a few moments uh, about something that's been on my heart. I want to talk to you about trust. I want to talk to you about trust. I'm going to invite your attention to uh, the book of 2 Kings chapter number 10 and verse number 15. 2 Kings chapter number 10 and verse number 15. And I'm going to read... Uh, from the New Living Translation. And if you've got your, your Bible or your device handy, man, I would love for you to read along with me. So here we go. Uh, 2 Kings chapter number 10, verse number 15. When Jehu left there, he met Jehonadab, son of Rechab, who was coming to meet him. 
after they had greeted each other, Jehu said to him, are you as loyal to me as I am to you? Yes, I am, Jehonadab replied. If you are, Jehu said, then give me your hand. So Jehonadab put out his hand and Jehu helped him into the chariot. And so I want to I want to talk to you today about trust. I believe that trust is a long overdue uh, conversation that we need to have in the body of Christ because I have discovered that people can speak in tongues and be stabbing you in the back at the same time. We could be dancing on the dance floor, uh, kicking and bucking, and, 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 and still talking about you behind your back. And so in this season, I believe God is, is, is helping us to reevaluate who it is that we have uh, in our circle. And so I just want to, I want to, I want to talk about trust because God laid that on my heart. So there must, there must be a reason because he never lays things on my heart without there being a, a, a reason or a purpose for him doing so. This week I've got several confirmations that this is really what I needed to talk about. And so here we go. Uh, Lord willing, uh, this year, 2023, I will turn 60 years old and I will celebrate 35 years in ministry, right? So that's, this, that's, the, that's a big thing it, for me in my life, 60 years and 35 years in ministry. And over the years, I've had to uh, bring counsel to a lot of situations, a lot of marriages, a lot of relationships. I've had to, I've had the honor, I've had the privilege of bringing counsel to. And what I have discovered is probably the 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 most devastating uh, thing to come back from is a breach of trust, right? When there is a a breach of trust, it takes things to a whole new level when there is a breach of trust. And so I've discovered that it's very difficult to to uh, to come back from. It doesn't mean you can't come back from it, but it's, it's very difficult. You're gonna have to put in some real work if you're planning on coming back from a breach of trust in, in a marriage, uh, in, in a relationship, in a friendship, uh, in a partnership, and in all of these uh, situations, a breach of trust can be devastating. And in the text I read to you uh, there in 2 Kings chapter number 10, verse number 15, New Living Translation, uh, I read to you that verse because, that passage, because in that passage, there is a conflict that is occurring, right? And there was a man by the name of Jehu, who is uh, uh, apparently trying to recruit people to fight on his team, to, to be on his team because the block has been got hot and he needs somebody to stand with him. And so he happens up on a young man. If that had been me and I'm in a fight, I'm in a skirmish, we're going to blows, we swinging. We swinging left, right, left, right. So it, it, it's, 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 it's on and popping. If I'm recruiting somebody to fight with me, the first question I'm going to ask that individual is, can you fight? That would seem like a logical question to ask somebody that's getting ready to go in battle with you. Can you fight? Do you know karate? There was a song when I was growing up says, I might not know karate, but I know crazy. Any of my old school folks that know that song, right? Uh, so he says, he says, uh, I, I, I want to, I want to let you up into my chariot. Uh, and I know this is a fight going on. But I'm not going to ask you about your fighting resume, right? I'm going to ask you, are you loyal? Can you be trusted? Isn't that funny that he didn't ask him, could he fight? He asked him, can he be trusted? And when Jehonadab replied, I am as loyal to you as you are to me. I can be trusted. It was only then that uh, Jehu extended his hand to Jehonadab and pull him up in the chariot with him. That if you want to roll with me, you got to be trustworthy, right? Before, before you can ride with me, 
You got to be trustworthy because I only want people rolling with me that I can trust. Somebody say in the comment section, can I trust you? Can you be trusted? Can you be trusted? Can, can, can I depend on you when the chips are down? And so once uh, Jehu said or Jehonadab said, uh, I can, you can trust me. It was then that Jehu pulled him up into his chariot. A lot of times, people of God, we extend our hand to people too quickly. I'm going to say that again. A lot of times we extend our hand too quickly. We pull people up into our lives. We pull people up into our situations and we don't even know if we can trust them. We, 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 we move sometimes, we move too quickly. Everybody rhyme with me got to be loyal. Say that with me. Type that in, your, in the comment section. Everybody rhyme with me got to be loyal. You got to be loyal. And so we got people riding with us. They cute, but they not loyal, right? They, they handsome, but they ain't loyal. They dress well, but they ain't loyal. They got a, they got a million dollar smile, but they not loyal, man. Loyalty is paramount. Loyalty is paramount. We extend our hand sometimes too quickly. You got to pay the price, right? You got to pay the price. In sporting events, I love sports. And in sporting events, uh, the closer you are to the action, the more expensive the seat is, right? The, 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 the closer you are to the action, the higher, the greater commitment, the greater your level of commitment has to be in terms of what you pay for that ticket, right? And what I discovered in life is we given all access passes to people that's just paid for cheap seats. We got to we got to reevaluate that thing. If if you're going to be close to me, if you got to be if you're going to be in my circle, you got to pay the price. You got you got to pay the price. Here's the thing. Forgiveness and trust do not go hand in hand. I'm going to say that again. Forgiveness and trust do not go hand in hand. No, absolutely not. Let me let me help you. See, forgiveness is primarily not for the offending party. Right? Forgiveness is for me. Forgiveness is is is, is for me. It's is for is for my heart to heal. It's so that I can move on. It's so that I don't get stuck in a, in, a, in a place with unforgiveness in my heart. Forgiveness is for me, right? And so I've got to, I've got to learn how to forgive. I've got to forgive because that's one of the things that can hold us back in terms of moving forward in life, life is, is the fact that we have not uh, a forgiving. So forgiveness is primarily not for the offending party. Forgiveness is primarily for me. It's for me. It's for me. So therefore, forgiveness is not necessarily earned. Forgiveness is more like grace. It's unmerited. It, it, is, it, is, it is something that I may not deserve, right? For, forgiveness is, is for, not for the offending party. Forgiveness is is for me. It is not earned. But trust, on the other hand, that's a whole different thing. Trust is a whole different thing. Trust must be earned. Will you do, do me a favor? Type that in the comment section. Trust must be earned. Trust must be earned. The offending party needs to take ownership of their offense. They need to empathize with how they made me feel, right? And then on top of all of that, uh, last but not least, they need to put some kind of system in place to make sure that that offense never happens again, right? They got to put something in place that, that assures me as the offended party 
that what happened is not going to happen again. Because what I've discovered, people of God, is that sometimes we get thrown off by tears. Hallelujah. We, we get thrown off by tears and people come to us crying, talking about, you know, please forgive me and, and, and I'm sorry and, and on and on and on. But if you live long as I have, you will discover that just because somebody cries does not mean they sorry. I'm going to give you time to think about that. Just because somebody cries does not mean that they sorry. It could be that they are sorry, but they're just sorry that they got caught. They're sorry that the gravy train has now come to a screeching halt because you have discovered that the, the offense of what they did. And so they're crying because they understand now that their, their gravy train has stopped. It's done derailed. It's done gone off the track, right? And so uh, family in 2023, uh, I have the Lord laid on my heart that this is going to be uh, the year of hire. It's going to be the year of hire, the hire in my finances, higher in my occupation, higher in my relationships. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this, for you to go higher may mean that you got to lay aside some dead weight. Whew. I'm preaching myself happy. For you to go higher may mean that you're going to have to lay aside some dead weight. Years ago, years ago, and I'm, I'm, I'm closing with this. Years ago, uh, I just discovered in my own life that I had too many people that I was putting confidence in that I really couldn't trust, right? And so what, I, what I've had to do over the years is I've had to reevaluate relationships. I've had to reevaluate re friendships. I've had to, uh, to reevaluate partnerships. Because everybody that's rolling with me, I got to be able to trust. I got to know that if the block gets hot, you're not going to leave me hanging, right? And so it is what that has done, people of God, it has, it has simplified my life. And it has caused me to have less stress. Because I know the people that, that I have now in my circle that I can trust. They are trustworthy. They have proven themselves over and over again to be trustworthy. And what I'm saying to you in 2023, I'm, I'm inviting you to do the same thing I did several years ago, to begin to reevaluate your friendships, your partnerships, your relationships, and, and begin to begin to make adjustments here and there. And I'm saying to you, only have people in your circle that you can trust. They may have to be, you might have to have people in your life that you can't trust, but that just because you have to have them in your life does not mean you got to have them in your circle. Somebody need to tweet that. Just because I got to have you in my life does not mean that I got to have you in my circle, right? And so that's, that's my encouragement for today, people of God. I want you to know that my wife and I love you. We are always praying for you that God uh, will show you uh, different glimpses of his glory, that your life will be a habitation of the Holy Ghost, that God in 2023 will use you as never before to take you to higher heights and deeper depths, to places that your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard, places that you've only dreamed of. I'm, I'm, de I'm decreeing over your life that this year, God is going to take you to places that you've only dreamed of. I know, I know it doesn't look like the way is going to be made, the, the money is going to be there, but I, I come to declare to you that the way is, is already been made and, and the money is going to be there when you need it. Do I have a witness in this place? Hallelujah. Well, that's all I got for you today. Uh, I, I hope you're enjoying today, this first day of the new year with your family. And uh, as I said at, at my uh, preliminary comments, I cannot wait to see you next week. We've made some some uh, physical changes to the building, and I I know that you're going to uh, uh, enjoy those things. If, and uh, 
I, I, I can't wait to see you. I'm just excited. I'm just so excited. I'm just, I'm excited, excited to see you. And uh, we're going to just come and we're going to fellowship uh, next week. And we got some surprises that are going to happen. And, and we're just going to, in this year, we're just going to believe God. We're going to launch out into the deep. We're going to launch out into the, into the deep. Amen. We're going to take risk. We're going to take, we're going to take risk. They may be calculated risk, but we're going to get out of the boat in 2023. Amen. My prayer for you is that you will continue to experience God, God's best. So until next time, I'll see you next week on January the 8th. And I want you to know that my wife and I love you so much. Be blessed and have an awesome New Year day. Church.